It's Julia Steve Childs cooking a log today. I don't know how long I could go on with that, but I truly feel like Julia Childs only working with a log. I don't know why that came up. Let's turn this log into a thing of beauty. It will be the last log in my shipping container home that will have embedded uh, French doors and a window on it. And it'll be the end cap that I close the uh, shipping container doors and here we have. So uh, I last left off on it, stripping the bark off like this, which takes a little while. Now I like the, I like the whole wooden, carved, chiseled up look and feel in a home such as mine, which will be Spanish Mission flavor. But your mileage may vary. So after I strip it like that, the one thing I do, I get out a wire wheel, any particular kind. Got a Milwaukee here, and uh, just a regular wire wheel. And then I chase it all down. Makes a little dust, you'll want to do it outside. I'll start right in the middle where you can see it. And make sure you do it away. Make sure you do it away from you, otherwise you'll end up covered in dust. Let me put the handle on. Saw it bouncing around there. Anyway, I'm gonna speed walk the rest of this. Y'all will get it. You'll get it. You don't need to watch me do it live. It's a lot of tedious work. It takes me two or three days to prep a log for inside of a shipping container home. So, um, you know, here's a before. I run a wire wheel on it. And here's a during. You can see I knock it off quite a bit. Make it, uh, I mean, it really removes uh, splinters. Uh, it's good looking. One trick that I have, if I find a little bee bark beetle and little insects underneath it, I put this in a fire ant mound and the fire ants come up inside there once the uh, bark is stripped off. And darn if they don't de-insect it for me. <laughs> so I'm not too concerned inside my shipping container. Obviously you would wanna, if you're doing a log cabin, you'd wanna treat your lumber, uh, you know, at 140 degrees. And you could get up in Texas in a hot box with that uh, to kill any insects, right? You'd wanna kill any, but I'm in a shipping container and uh, I am really not too concerned. My structure is the shipping container. And it'll be earth bag. So I know that, uh, yeah, you know, I put diatomaceous earth and uh, borax. Uh, I spray them with that. And I know that if there is anybody that comes out of this eventually, I won't have a problem. But your, your mileage will vary. And if I was building a log cabin, I would definitely look into creating a, a hot box and... Uh, roast these myself so you add a little solar energy to the shipping container down here in the south and that baby will get over 120 degrees in the summer all righty well that is just about as big as a plate i want to 
cut this out because the log is heavy <laughs> and use it as a template above my head kind of see if I want to shave any of this off obviously this side is smaller than that I'm willing to accept a little little angle one of the nice things of working with uh, non-dimensional lumber and freehand is the organic vibe of it. Maybe I'll take advantage of it and not square this one up. I've squared other ones up. But I might not square this one up. So those are pretty much the same on each end. This end down here is a little bigger. It's about a quarter to a half inch bigger on that end. But it has a little curve to it. And I think that curve will point down. And the flat edge I'll put against the beam top. Now one thing about uh, cedar um, is the sapwood uh, will rot in contact with the ground. And even though I didn't have this for very long, it's I can see that the sapwood here is beginning to decay uh, where it was touching the ground. So I might chemically treat that so that it won't um, decay any further. Alternately, depending on what my paper plate tells me, I might even cut the top so that it fits better on the beam. Let's find out together. All right, let's take this log, which feels pretty good. Now I have a little bit of soft uh, sapwood up here that I might cut out or I might convert. So I think that part, the flat part, will be on the top. So uh, I'm going to pretend the bottom is the top for now because this is heavy. I'm going to lay it out. And uh, for a log, this actually has, it's more like a square. <laughs> it's a very square log, so it, that's to my advantage. Let's get it set up there see what we think. See that fighting me and fussing with me? Ridiculous. Let's take a look here. So assuming the top is flat, that's a pretty flat side. I, I think that I'll spin that around and that that will be the top. Let's keep working. So look, I can see it's going to uh, catch these all except that one. So it'll catch most of the supports just as is. So I will shift it in so the door, when it closes, just misses the post. So right about there. So the, using the template, I can see that I'm going to catch the roof rafters mostly. Uh, and I don't even think I have to cut those out. So what I'm going to do here is get a piece of 4x4 four four and cut the pockets in that I'll need for a 4x4. Four and I'll need three of them, two on the ends to hold it up, and one in the middle to act as the uh, inside door jam. And then uh, once I get those carved out, I can flip it upside down with the fork truck and hang it with clamps, I believe, from the rafter. So that's the goal. Let's get that done today. <laughs> 